This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector page curl effect using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. We'll open up our align and, uh, align and distribute menu with that button there. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke. So the first thing we'll do in Inkscape is um, make sure you're zoomed in at 100%. We'll go to view, zoom. I'm not sure if I said that already. View, zoom, zoom in at one to one. And yeah, so there we, we're zoomed in at 100%. So first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle. So just come over to the squares and rectangles tool or you can just press F4 on the keyboard and just click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle sort of like that. This is going to represent the page that we are going to give that curl effect to. So once you have that we can go back to the, um, the select tool and I'm just gonna make this a um, an off shade of, of black maybe a 90 percent gray and I'll push this off to the side for now and the next thing we're going to want to do is Let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. We'll come over to the circles and ellipses tool and click on that. I'm just going to click and drag and create a long, narrow ellipse like that. And I'm going to turn that red and bring the opacity down about in half. And then I'm going to create another one of those ovals up here. This one's going to be um, much bigger, much fatter, maybe about that size. And I'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to position this in the top, the top left-hand portion of that, the other oval right there. And let me uh, resize this a little bit, a little bigger. I'm going to hold Control and just click and drag one of these arrows to scale this thing up a little bit. I'll put that right there. And once you have those set up about, about like that, we can just click and drag over both of those and go to Path Union. And then we're going to click on this again so we can get our rotation handles. And then we'll hold control on the keyboard and grab one of these corner handles and just rotate this around three steps while holding control. So there's one, two, three. Three steps just like that. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on this black rectangle. And I'm going to align the bottom edges and then align the right sides with those two buttons right there. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's click on just this graphic right here. And I'm going to hold control and scale this thing down a little bit. If you look at right here, the space between, if you look at the negative space between this red object and the black object, this point right here, this shape, that's going to represent our page curl. So however big or small you want it to be, make sure you have it sized however you'd like it to be. So for example, if I wanted, to be, if I wanted this to be a small page curl, you can see there's the page curl that's going to be right there. If you want it bigger, go ahead and go like that. But I'm going to keep it a, um, I don't know, just a, a mid-range right there like that. And the next thing to do is I'm going to hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and grab one of these corner arrows and just click and drag to scale this out a little bit, just a little bit. You want these, these red edges overlapping the black edges just a little bit. Maybe, maybe even about that much is good. Let me press 1 to zoom back out. And if you want to zoom in and look at that, you just press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and out. And when you're done, you just press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. So let's take this black rectangle and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's come down to our color picker and give that a shade of blue. I'm going to go with this shade right here. And I'm going to lower this beneath the red ovals and hold shift on the keyboard and click on the red ovals. And with them both selected, we can go to Path, Difference. And then we can go to Path, Break Apart. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's grab this portion of the blue shape and just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We're done with that. So what we're going to do now is let's zoom in on this graphic right here. Let's, I'm just going to hold Control and roll up on the mouse wheel. Or you can just press Plus and Minus. We want to zoom in on this blue graphic right here. And we're going to grab the Bezier pen, or you can just press B on the keyboard to get that tool. And I'm going to turn on the snap to paths. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto the edge, this edge right here, and then click. And I'm going to take this line and bring it across until it snaps 
to about right there and then click and then finish this line up going around the outside of the blue object and then connect it back to the starting point. And we'll go to the select tool and click on that. And I'm gonna click on um, this blue object, right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on that Bezier object, uh, object that we just drew and go to path intersection. And you'll see we have this individual shape right here. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to make that the same shade of blue that this is by grabbing the dropper. Uh, if you don't see the dropper icon on your screen, you can just press F7 to get the dropper tool. And I'm just going to click and drag a little portion of this blue area to make that the same shade. And it looks like nothing happened there, but something did because it's, as you can see, it's now filled in with that color. And I'm going to turn off the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then I'm going to right click that object and go to duplicate and then I'm going to hold shift and click on this blue object and go to path difference so there are now two separate objects and you'll have to excuse me my uh my system's glitching a little bit here there we go and my graphics card was glitching a little bit and as you can see we got two different objects there so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this bottom object right here and I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and I'm going to turn that black and I'm going to give that I'm going to come up here to the fill tab and I'm going to click on this button that says linear gradient and click on that we can come up here and turn off the snap to paths we're done with that and I'm going to press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'm going to take the darker end and put it up here and then take the lighter end and put it up here and we want to try to position it so that the line of the gradient is parallel with the line of the page curl. You could just eyeball it and it should be close enough. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. And with the gradient tool still selected, let's click on the blue shape above it. And let's give that a linear gradient as well. And we'll take this, this stop right here and put this towards the edge. And we'll take this stop and put this up towards that corner. And I'm just going to adjust this so that it's going parallel with the edge of the page curl. And with, with, this, with this stop selected right here, let's come over to our color menu and let's bring the opacity all the way up. And under the HSL tab, I'm going to click on this, the L column right here. I'm just going to bring that to the right a little bit. And then I'm going to double click on this line about right here to create a new stop. And then I'm going to double click on it up here to create another stop. And then I'll click on this stop and I'll bring this L column over to the left to make this a little darker. And I'll leave this one just how it is and we'll come up to the one up top here and I'll slide the L column to the right to make that a little lighter. And then we can go back to our select tool and I'm going to right click this object and go to duplicate and I'll turn that black and I'll come up here and turn on the snap to cusp nodes and click this a second time so we get the rotation handles and once we have the rotation handles there's going to be a little crosshair in the center I'm going to take that crosshair and snap it onto this corner down here and then turn off the snap to cusp nodes and once we've snapped it down there that crosshair is going to represent the axis on which the um, the graphic rotates so with that with that set I'm going to take this top arrow in the center here and just shift this over to the right a little bit and then I'm going to click it again to get back to the scaling handles and I'll take this top one and just drag that down a little bit and then I'll lower that one step up here with this button lower selection one step uh, click that again might have to do it twice and I'm going to take the opacity of this and drop this down a fair amount and then finally let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out and let's click on this uh, big black object here in the background and I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'll click on this part of the gradient, the, the stop on the right. Bring the opacity up and then take the, uh, the L column and slide that to the left a little bit. Just to make that a little lighter. And I'll put that right about here. And then I'll take this and put this up in the corner like that. And that's pretty much it. One final step, if you'd like to put some information down here in this uh, page curl area. Let me just create some text to show you. I'm just gonna write text. Uh, I'll go back to the select tool and I'll turn that white and I'll put this over here 
And I'm going to hold control and click and drag that up to scale it. Maybe like that. Maybe I'll rotate this around a little bit. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower this a couple of steps until it goes beneath these two objects. So I'm going to lower that one step with this button. So it puts it beneath this gradient piece right here. And then I'll lower that again to put it beneath the page curl. And that's how you could, as you can see, it kind of looks like it's appearing below the page curl graphic. So that's how you can create something like that using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.